So it seems like the shadowy and sinister Dark Angels have been doing rather well in 40k events recently. Let's take a look at the power of the Unforgiven with some of their strongest army lists. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about Dark Angels winning grand tournaments. The Unforgiven have been having a rather good run of it recently, and are perhaps shaping up to be one of the single strongest armies in Warhammer 40k Arcs of Omen. Currently, the new Arcs of Omen rules haven't been out for all that long so far, but the Dark Angels already seem to be doing pretty great in terms of tournament stats. They've got a win rate of around about 57% in Arcs of Omen, varying a bit depending on which source you take it from and people have used them to already win three grand tournaments with a whole slew of other high placings. They do look like they're one of the strongest armies in 40k right now. The main reason for all this is that they just came out spectacularly well out of the Space Marine updates for a whole bunch of different reasons. Their Deathwing Terminators are enormously efficient, Thunderhammer and Stormshield Terminators are just great full stop. 33 points for that defensive profile, plus Thunderhammers in melee is great. Never mind the fact that Dark Angels get transhuman physiology on them, can bolt on a couple of Cyclone Missile launchers for free, and even take along a free Psychic Denial with a Watcher in the Dark. They do seem to be taken in just about every list, but a lot of the lists tend to be skewing even more towards Ravenwing, which are similarly great. A whole bunch of their data sheets are just incredibly efficient. They get whole game Devastator Doctrine now to amp up their firepower, and the Ravenwing unique one means that they get to move further, and potentially advance and shoot, allowing them to get a 4 plus invul from their jink. They can get line of sight on what they need to normally, and get the first strike on the opponent, as well as being a little bit tougher to take out than most fast vehicles otherwise. The supporting options for the chapter are pretty great as well, in Terramancy if you want to take it, solid unique characters like Lazarus and Azrael, Oaths of Moment as a secondary, and some nice options out of the regular Dark Angels. It does seem that perhaps at the moment, most army lists tend to take a mix of both of the Deathwing and the Ravenwing, though maybe a bit more skews towards Ravenwing out of the two. In this video, I thought we'd take a look at a bunch of lists, starting with the ones that have won Grand Tournaments, and see what choices they're taking. First up, we've got this dual wing list from Manny Chima, who used this to take first at the Beachhead Brawl. Manny seems to have been doing rather well with the Dark Angels recently, taking this and then taking down another Grand Tournament the week before. Obviously, player skill is probably the main factor here, certainly a name very common to see on the podiums of tournaments, though it's interesting to see the exact units used in what combinations. In his winning list, it seems to be around about half Deathwing Terminators, supported by a few characters and eight land speeders. It has been a bit of an about turn in 40k recently, from land speeders being a bit underwhelming, to one of the stronger options for a bunch of lists. Starting with the Deathwing elements, there's two blocks of ten Terminators and one block of five. They're all armed with Thunderhammers and Storm Shields, plus as many Cyclone Missile Launchers and Watchers on the Dark as you can take in the units. Perhaps not too surprising here, I feel like Games Workshop have made the optimal build for the Terminators just very, very obvious. The Storm Shield Terminators are going to be able to laugh off most high AP attacks, particularly if one of them noses into light cover or something. They actually have some range threat and massive melee as well. They're well supported by a bunch of the characters, it looks like they can pick up rights of war for objective secured if they need it, that's on a Talon Master who could hover behind the lines. A Blade Guard Ancient who's upgraded to the Chapter Ancient to make them better in melee, plus also has the Pennant of Remembrance for a minus one damage, great value support character between both of those upgrades there. And a Ravenwing Apothecary that can move fast if you need to, but it seems like it's geared up to support the Terminators with Decisive Tactician, giving you an aura of plus one to advance and charge, really quite a big deal on slow moving terminators. The Apothecary can also provide them some feel no pain and healing, and for a command point can resurrect one of them from the dead, which you can set up towards the front of the unit if needed, meaning that you make the charge distance smaller. Overall a pretty indomitable battle line there, very tough, very dangerous, and well supported with characters. Then for the Ravenwing element, there's two Ravenwing Talon Masters, one of which takes the rights of war, the objective secured one, and one of which has Arbiter's Gaze, that's the relic that makes them always hit on a 2+, plus, basically. These guys with the Ravenwing Heavy Doctrine all game long will be able to get AP-2 shooting on those heavy bolters and assault cannons, really quite general purpose, and completely character protective most of the time. There's also a Ravenwing Champion here, really quite cheap and effective to be honest, at just 70 points for this. He takes the Blade of Triumph, the damage 3-1 for the Chapter Champion, which he takes as well, and also the Imperium Sword too. Here you've just got a ridiculously fast moving and very hard hitting combat character. I believe he'd be hitting with 7 attacks at strength 8, AP 3 and damage 3 with that blade, and that's really quite brutal. Then we've got the land speeders, nice and straightforward, 3 land speeder tornadoes with a multi-melter and assault cannon, 
and three of the plasma wielding land speed Vengeances with the plasma storm battery on the top. It can afford to start really far back on the board with basically a 15 inch movement in the Ravenwing Heavy Doctrine and potentially advance as well if they want to cut their firepower a little bit for the 4 plus inball save with Jink. Units this fast with this much firepower will be a bit of a nightmare to play against. They can just afford to jump into just within 24 inches of their intended target and hopefully remain as safe as possible from retribution otherwise. If you really wanted to focus fire, I guess you could even use that targeting guidance stratagem for 2 CP to give you Dark Angels a plus 1 to hit against one key target. Overall, it just looks very, very scary though. An indomitable and very tough battle line of Terminators that can have Obsec and some good character support, two brutal gun turrets and those Talon Masters hovering behind them, and then six spectacularly dangerous and very hard to kill land speeders zipping around the board and picking off the targets that most need to die. Very scary all around, and not surprised it did well in the hands of a very good player. It is kind of interesting to see the evolution of the list as well, as this was the one that Mr. Chima used to take down the Cross Swords GT the week before. A smaller grand tournament this one of 40 players, and there are a few different units here as well. Some of the biggest differences in the list are that Samio makes an appearance. It looks like he's here to give some big re-rolls to that block of Ravenwing Black Knights with the Corvus Hammers. They can be pretty brutal both at range and in melee when they have Samael's buffs going on, and can definitely threaten first turn charges, which is kind of spooky to plenty of armies. This time there's a regular apothecary taking decisive tactician on foot rather than the more expensive Ravenwing one, and a few less terminators, the smaller squad being sobbed out for the Black Knights also in the elite slot. Interesting to see a slightly different take on the same list, and very impressive for any one player to take down two grand tournaments on the trot. Moving on to another biggish tournament that Dark Angels won was this one from a little bit earlier. This one was won by Dussosoir Guillaume, winning the Winter War tournament, which was a five round one but only 20 players, which did mean that the list did go 4 and 1 as opposed to a 5 0 undefeated. I believe that this one was slightly before the Plasma Inceptor change as well, so there is a cheap unit of Plasma Death in here. I guess you could always sob it out for something like a unit of Black Knights potentially. They still bring a bunch of plasma shots, plus some nice dangerous Corvus hammer melee. This one again shares a fair few themes with Mr. Chima's lists. Again, we've got a pair of different Talon Masters, one of them with the Arbiter's Gaze, though interestingly the other one is tricked out for combat. He's taking the Imperium Sword and the Heavenfall Blade. He can potentially do some pretty interesting things with combat Talon Masters, say have them shielded behind a Deathwing Terminator line, jump them out to gun down something and charge something else, and then use the Ravenwing stratagem to fall back after you've fought, and use his great movement to get back behind safety. It does mean that you can potentially threaten units that otherwise you might not be able to reach so well, things hiding behind cover and thinking that they were safe. In any case, it is just fairly potent to have a fair bit of melee threat on a unit that moves so fast, even if it's just making a break for last ditch manoeuvres towards the end of a game. Otherwise, there's a few other tweaks. Samuel's here again, I guess, to support the Plasma Inceptors here, potentially. They'd be wanting the reroll ones to hit that he could give them. And then there's a Ravenwing Apothecary who takes the rights of war and decisive tactician. Again, it looks like he's going to be supporting the Terminator advance, giving them objective secured, going a bit faster, and giving them movement and healing models. Again, there's those two squads of Terminators with the Thunderhammers, Storm Shields, Missiles, and the Watcher. Scary battle line there, as always. A fairly similar choice with the land speeders as well, three with multi melters, two of which get upgraded to tornadoes with the assault cannon, and two vengeances. There's then a few plasma inceptors that got nerfed, and a few green wing dark angels as well, five infiltrators and five incursors to perhaps take objectives in the midfield or the home field. I guess potentially something that the raven wing and the death wing maybe don't do quite as well as these guys. I feel like I have seen a fair amount of infiltrators backing up the raven wing and the death wing in dark angels lists. In any case, cool to see another take on this. Talon Masters, a Deathwing battle line, and some land speeders winging about does seem to be a bit of a staple. For our fourth list, here we've got another very high placing Dark Angels one. This one run by a JC Braun, who used it to take second at DZTV GT. This was a 34 player one, and I believe that the list went 4 1. Again, the Arcs of Omen went around a fast attack focus. It does seem to be the normal way for these ones. I guess these individual land speeders make a lot of sense, and they do like to take up detachment slots. This one is the one that shied away from the Deathwing the most out of any of them, only taking the one unit of five Terminators with Thunderhammer and Stormshield. And a lot of the rest of the list looks like it's built around supporting the Raven Wing with the Black Knights and the attack bikes. First up, there's Azrael, who is the Warlord, but I suspect probably not to use his actual Warlord trait, 
I guess the list will want to sit in Devastator Doctrine for most of the time, but making him the Warlord does give you an extra 2 command points, so it's a net positive trade-off. He's decently fighty in melee, gives out some big chapter master rerolls to either the Black Knights, the Terminators, or the Attack Bikes, I guess. Plus he's got his 4 plus invul save aura, again potentially useful for a fair few of them, perhaps the Devastators or the Attack Bikes in particular. Next we've got the Ravenwing Apothecary, this time upgraded to Chief Apothecary with the Selfless Healer. This is the one that allows him to resurrect a model each turn for free. I'd guess that he might actually be playing around with the Attack Bikes this time, Resurrecting a 50 point model is pretty big. There's a Ravenwing Talonmaster with Arbiter's Gaze, the Ravenwing Champion again, he's upgraded to Chapter Champion, and this time takes the Reliquary of the Repentant, another fairly common Dark Angel's choice that allows them to reduce enemy imbals in combat. Finally, there's a Primaris Chaplain on bike, he's a Master of Sanctity with Wise Orator for 2 plus to cast those litanies, and he has Catechism of Fire and Canticle of Hate. I'd guess that his main purpose is going to be to support the Ravenwing Black Knights there. Plus one to wound seems pretty excellent for those Plasma Talons, and a bonus to charge gives them yet more threat range. Then getting into the meat of the list, which are the Ravenwing, we've got two big units of Black Knights, five of them with the Corvus Hammers. As mentioned, they can certainly threaten first turn charges with their enormous mobility, and particularly with that Chaplain Litany, I guess. There's two units of three attack bikes with the multi melters, excellent targets for Azrael's Warlord rerolls, or potentially the Chaplain's plus one to wounds, and then two Land Speed of Vengeances, a bit more independent, hovering around doing their thing. Then, interestingly, there's a few more Green Wing Dark Angels this time, two units of infiltrators with the Helix Gauntlets to hold down your objectives, and then a single unit of Devastators in a drop pod, taking two multi melters, two Grav Cannons, and an Armorium Cherub. Kind of an interesting one, these guys. I guess they are really quite efficient, and maybe add in with the Raven Wing with another Alpha Strike option. It would have been interesting to know whether they were taken ahead of things like Land Speeders or more Attack Bikes or something due to model constraints, or whether they were a deliberate optimization. In any case, I guess they could land near Azrael potentially, or on an objective or something. They should be able to get some good lines of sight on the enemy. Anyway, fun to see a take on Dark Angels that goes very light on the Death Wing and still does very well. Finally, last but by no means least, is a list that we've already featured on the channel by Damian Bridgewell. This was the one that was used to take second at Uprising Adelaide early in the season, the big tournament of 220 players. This one does go down the two big units of Deathwing approach, again with the Thunderhammers and Cyclone Missiles, except this time they're supported by Master Lazarus as well for a bit of defence against mortal wounds. And the Chapter Ancient that they've got along this time with the Penance of Remembrance, He's got the Watch trait, as well as Rites of War for an automatic Psychic Denial once per match. Again, a fair few common choices here. A Talon Master with Arbiter's Gaze for some brutal shooting. Them and Samuel can buff all those attack bikes with some great rerolls. And again, there's a Ravenwing Chief Apothecary with Selfless Healer. Excellent for healing just about most of the units here, whether they're attack bikes or Deathwing Terminators. Finally, we do have that Deathwing Battle Line. They're also supported by a small squad of two Deathwing Terminators. They're the Command Squad version who could be used to hold a home field objective or protect some characters perhaps. There's two units of the Infiltrators again with the Helic Gauntlets for some Deep Strike Denial and Obsec on the objectives. And then finally, and kind of terrifying for any vehicles on the field, are nine attack bikes with multi melters. These things are going to be absolutely savage if they get into melter range with their awesome movement, and particularly with all the big rerolls from Samael and the Talon Master. Very scary stuff there. Dark Angels really do seem to be good at the hammer and anvil approach at the moment, tough terminators to hold the midfield, and an absolute hammer blow of raven wing to demolish one chunk of the enemy's army. Overall, it does rather seem that the Dark Angels are having a good time of it in tournaments at the moment. Certainly a fair bit of convergence on lists, Deathwing Terminators are very much in, in every single one of these in fact. They'll often be supported by various flavours of land speeders and attack bikes from the raven wing, Talon Masters, maybe an Apothecary and Champion, and perhaps a unit or two of Infiltrators to hold objectives. As always, let me know your thoughts on these lists down in the comments below. Are there anything similar to what you might be running at the moment? And always happy to hear any other insights as to how they actually function in game. Obviously, I didn't write or run these myself. In any case, if you've enjoyed a little bit of army list discussion, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new videos out just about every day. If you'd like to see a bit more of a talk through the entire Dark Angels roster, then feel free to check out the link that I've got in the video description to my Dark Angels army overview in Arcs of Omen, just talking through some of their stronger units and tactics at the moment.
Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and that is what allows me to keep on making videos like this quite so regularly. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.